So I'm out on a game drive this morning, but this video is going to be a little different. I'm going to give you five quick tips on how to improve your photos when on safari. The first tip may sound pretty obvious, but it's actually get out as early as you can and stay out as late as you can. Sunrise on the Mara and generally across Africa is beautiful. So it's worth not only getting up to see that, but the light is brilliant, making great photos and the animals are more active at the beginning and end of day because it's cooler. So you'll hopefully see something amazing and be able to get some great photos. So we're here at the hippo pool and tip number two is get low. What I mean by that is get as low down as you can. Some safari vehicles have a door like this which you can open or even remove. For hippos, if you lie down here, you want to try and get as close to their eye level as possible. That makes the animal seem bigger and more impressive in the photo and it just is a much nicer angle. So I'm here with a topi and rule number three, which is don't always take headshots. You know, it's nice to get a close up picture. Sure, I get it, I do it myself. But sometimes take a step back, zoom out a bit, because often on safari you're in beautiful places and you wanna make sure that you capture that. So having a wider lens, it may not look very wide, but it actually is 70 mil to 200, is great for capturing the topi in its setting or environment and getting the escarpment in the background. Now I have to thank a guest, Caitlin, who came up with the analogy pie, which is portrait, interaction and environment. Three things I say you need to try and get at each wildlife sighting. You know, get that nice portrait, sure. Then try and get an interaction or like a behavior photo and then once you've got that, do an environment shot to show where the animal is living. And with those three pictures, you'll tell a nice rounded story of that particular encounter. Oh man, it's hot. Now we're here with some Thompson gazelle and point number four, which is try and get eye contact. Now I know in the previous point I said don't get headshots, but obviously sometimes you want that. But even if it isn't a headshot, having lots of pictures of the back end of an animal or its side on walking across, after a while gets a bit repetitive. So if you get the animal heading straight towards you, it may not be looking directly into the camera, but as long as you can see the animal's eyes, there'll be more engagement with the photo and will overall increase the quality of the image. I'd just like to add that the photos in this video aren't my best photos I've ever taken. I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you use those tips on location. So, driving along, trying to find a subject to film and photograph, but you know, gotta be patient, gotta be patient. So the fifth and final tip is patience. I mean, even though there are animals all around and probably more than you've ever seen in your life, it is still difficult to find them sometimes, but also, waiting with the subject allows you to get to know them uh, and you're more likely to see some unique behavior which will lend very well to a nice photograph. 
So we're here with a breeding herd of buffalo and we're probably going to sit for at least half an hour and just see what they do, which direction they go and if anything cool happens. So we've been here for about half an hour now. The buffalo have come a lot closer, which is great because I was able to take a nice kind of wide picture of the whole herd with the escarpment in the background. So it just goes to show that patience does pay off. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see some more, then please subscribe to my channel. I really need them um, and I'll keep making these videos. I've got lots more tips that can help you improve your photography while you're on safari or just general wildlife photography tips as well. Well, if you like this video, then let me know. But until then, have a good one.